Hello everybody. Now I will start with the another module 3. Module 3 means it is basically mail processing in the elaborately I will try to discuss about the casting process and of course this casting process not for only metals. So, we will try to discuss is the for glasses and uh, thermoplastic polymers what way the casting can be applied uh, thus other than the metallic material that we will try to discuss in this case. So, before this discussing all actually we will start with the casting process of the metallic component. So, that is usually known as the sand casting process which is the heavy structure we use for this particular um, casting process. Then lost foam and the cool molds this type of the uh, casting process we will try to discuss first. After that we will discuss in the shape casting sheet casting of the glasses. So, that means the casting process associated with the glasses then the molding injection molding and the polymer extrusion basically the processing of the polymer material and then we try to discuss the blow molding specific process which is associated with the polymer and the glasses we we'll try to discuss and then fuse deposition modeling of the polymer material which is more uh, important or basically this fuse division one kind of the printing process uh, associated with the, the this polymeric material. And then we will discuss try to discuss the case studies associated with the different uh, processes. So, these are the overall content of, of this of this particular module which is I, I define as a male processes associated with the casting of the mainly the metals ceramic glasses and thermoplastic polymer these three different types of the material will discuss in this module. Now, overall we see the processing of the metal. So, processing of the metals can be uh, three basic group based on their physical and the mechanical nature. So, we see that metals can be and the three different categories of the metals uh, not ma materials can be in the three different category one is the metal then polymer and another is a ceramic. So, these three types of the materials usually we, we, we can we can see the lots of application and, and then again the when you try to look metallic material is the very basic category is the ferrous material another is the non ferrous materials and see uh, ferrous materials is may be one of the main constituent is the main constituent is the iron. So, cast iron and steel these are the example of the ferrous materials, but non ferrous materials uh, that does not contain any kind of the ferrous materials uh, or this is known as the non ferrous, but ferrous material might be contained in the various in the uh, as a minor component in the in case of the non uh, non ferrous materials, but here the major component is the non ferrous materials. So, that is what is called the, the non ferrous materials. So, these are the basic categorization of uh, materials and then we will try to discuss first at the metallic materials. Uh, in terms of the this uh, processing of the metallic materials. So, we understand the processing of the metallic materials is basically there are four different uh, categories, four different manufacturing process we usually know associated with the processing of the metals. One is the casting process which is the first step of the manufacturing process. Then forming operation we have already discussed some what is the casting, what is the forming operation. Then we can follow some kind of the machining operation, machining is the the basically removal of the metal to get the particular shape desired shape and size and uh, another manufacturing process which is associated to the welding process. That means, when you try to bond uh, two component together and when there is a very heavy complex structure. So, in that case we will try to bond the two different met metal so, this is known as the welding process. So, this four are the actually basic categorization of the manufacturing process associated with the processing of the materials. But in this particular uh, course, we will try to look into only these three aspect casting, forming and the welding. So, here we will not look into the machining processes associated with the uh, any kind of the metallic or non metallic materials. Now, for the timing we are focusing on the casting process. So, casting process we understand it is involves the uh, melting of the material and typically associated with the mostly melting of the metal means mostly most application we can find out of the metallic metals. Now, once we met, melt the material this molten metal is basically poured into the mold cavity. So, the cavity is basically uh, is the is the shape of the cast component which you, we are finally looking for and then 
after that uh, before that after pouring up the liquid metal in the mold cavity we allow to do some kind of the solidification. Once we solidify then we try to get the desired shape by following another finishing operation also sometimes and uh, these things and to improve the properties uh, we try to follow some kind of the treatment also further treatment this case. So, but casting process is basically associated with the, the starting from the molten of the melting of the material and ending with the solidification after solidification of the material. This is the, the steps involved between these two between uh, this we can say this is the casting operation. Actually it looks very simple that very basic steps we can easily say that it can be melting molten metal creating melting and then getting the shape desired shape. But if you look in details of the uh, components associated with the casting operation is actually very complex. So, there are so many issues problems associated with the different steps. Of course, we will try to look into the different techniques the casting processes associated with the metallic material. So, let us start with this thing the different techniques. So, therefore, casting process can be overall classified into two basic categorization one is the expandable mold another is the permanent mold. So, basically depending upon the type of the mold it can be expandable mold that means, we can destroy the mold after this thing another is the permanent mold we can reuse several times this mold. Now, expandable mold is basically sand casting we say there is one category cell casting plaster mold casting these are the different names technique ceramic casting investment casting in this cases we can use the the expandable mold that means, we can expand the we can remove the mold material we cannot reuse the mold material. But in permanent mold basically we make a mold uh, we can use uh, reuse the mold also to for example, the uh, based on that we there are several casting techniques has been developed one is the die casting centrifugal casting injection molding compression molding semi centrifugal casting low pressure permanent mold casting vacuum permanent mold. these are the all different types of the casting operation is uh, developed based on the uh, permanent mold. Now, focusing on the sand casting we can see that sand casting where molten metal is basically cast into the mold from the sand mixture. So, the uh, the casting means the if you see uh, in this case uh, sand casting is we can put this thing we can create the cavity or the passage through which the molten metal is poured and it enters the mold cavity all this passage is created by using the, the this is the using the building of the sand and the different uh, way. So, sand can be mixed up with the binding as an element then it can be it, it can be hardened uh, to take the particular shape. So, this way sand can be utilized well, of course, sand casting is the very old process it can be 2000 years old. So, so but there till now we use this thing because it is a very first step of the manufacturing process to make the billets different shape of the, the component through which a further processing of this particular component we can reach the finished product. Now, typical application of the sand casting that actually inc includes for example, the machine base big base big structure large turbine impellers and propellers plumbing fixtures. So, there are a wide variety of components can be produced the using the sand casting operation, but usually sand casting is applicable when there is a need for the large kind of large structure. Now, in the sand casting we use the most of the cases we use the silica sand as a mold material. So, because sand is inexpensive actually inexpensive and at the same time it can resist the high temperature because silicon can resist the high temperature. So, that is why it can hold the molten material. Uh, that is why we use the sand as a uh, the mold material. So, in the sand, sand mold casting process we can see there are so many parts are there. We see there is a runner this is the space through which the liquid metal is poured and through the getting system it enters the mold cavity and there is a core also core means it try to help so kind of the cavity within the in the cast component. And there is a riser also which is another passage through riser we can push the liquid metal also. But remaining part we see that all is holded by the sand not only sand we can mix with the sand the several other editing agent uh, to just hold on this thing and all thing hold in the one kind of the part is the uh, metallic part okay, or very harder part we can take the complete system uh, of the sand casting process. Now, 
steps involved for producing the parts in the sand casting process. We can see that uh, how to one component can be produced using the sand casting operation. First we make the patterns, uh, so basically pattern is made because the pattern actually indicate the replica of the component we are basically uh, designing or which component we are we want to produce. So, for that we make a pattern first. So, pattern we made it first and then pattern making the associated with the pattern making, core making and the getting system also all is the part of the uh, this we can attach with the along with the pattern because core also core making means we create the hollow section. So, therefore, some some solid component will be there uh, to hold it to create the hollow part in a cast component. So, that is the core. So, all are under the uh, this thing the different we can making the make the pattern. So, once we make the pattern then we create the mold cavity using this pattern, pattern is put there to create the mold cavity and this mold cavity is uh, uh, this remaining part of the mold cavity is basically filled by the sand here. Now, once it is done then we pour the molten metal in the and the mold cavity pouring into the mold but pouring into the mold before pouring into the mold we have to create the molten metal. So, we have to create the pool of the molten metal. So, we create the pool of the molten metal that molten metal is poured into the mold cavity. Now, once the pour in the mold cavity then after that we allow to solidification after solidification it we can say the casting done uh, after the solidification process. But when it is the during the casting process we use the the sub steps associated with the sec out just to remove the the core and then we remove all of the riser and get this is the part of the system if you see the riser and get system is also is there in a part of the complete casting system. But actual the shape of the cast cavity is this one we are this is the exactly replication of the uh, component the remaining are the additional things which is attached with this thing just to complete the system of the casting system. But these are the not part of the the riser runner get these are the not part of the the final component. So, therefore, we need to remove this part uh, to get it. So, once we get it the remove this part riser gate uh, all this part we can core we can remove it the uh, not exactly core core is uh, yes core has to remove all these things then we get the cast component. Once we get it then we perform the heat treatment operation. So, to just improve the properties to uh, release the any kind of the internal stress. Uh, we can improve uh, through um, the reduce the residual stress through the heat treatment operations. So, once the heat treatment done then we perform the cleaning and the finishing operation. So, some kind of the looking into the dimensional of the exit component. So, dimensional accuracy brings here through the the cleaning and the, the finishing operations. So, once it is done then we perform the inspection to check whether is there any kind of the internal defects or external defects are they are associated with the casting process. So, these are the complete steps the associated with the any kind of the uh, the sand casting process. Now, there are different the sand casting process when we discuss that there are so many factors with the selection uh, of the sand for the mold because we are simply saying this sand casting. So, first the we have to select the sand. So, sand cannot be any form. So, certain particular form certain binding element, element will help to make the better of the, the sand casting process. For example, usually sand having very fine round grains usually and which is round grain sand is usually packed together closely and such that it will produce a smooth mold surface try to produce smooth mold surface. But fine grain sand enhances the mold strength because if it is a fine grain means the very small grain sand it grain sand is actually increases the mold strength. So, that you have to look but lower the mold permeability permeability means basically uh, you know we along the sand along with the sand we use the binding element. So, binding element the the melting uh, the vaporization temperature of the binding element usually low. So, when you it is contact with the molten material molten steel for example, this is the vaporize the uh, few few binding elements can vaporize. So, you need to put some kind of the the passage through which this vapor can come out from this thing that is called the that is simply called the permeability of the mold. So, therefore, if too much of fine grains we can pack together to make the mold then in enhance the mold strength, but at the same time it actually decreases the permeability of the mold. So, this is the thing we have to take some optimum condition such that both can be maintained. Now, 
three different types of the sand types of the sand mold can be three different one is the green sand mold cold box mold and the no bake mold so these are the three different types of the the, the sand mold we can utilize in the sand casting operation so here most common mold material for the green sanding is the mixture of the sand clay and water the simply way sand clay and water in the in case of the most common mold material so we see already we said that not only sand because we need to put something which will be able to bind the sand so here binding can be clay and water is utilized and that can act as a mold material in the sand molding the green sand molding operation it is also most moist and flexible so some moisture is there and is also flexible easy to shape to because we use the clay and this thing we can any any shape we can we can bring at the same time expand least expensive and the reusable that means reusable means the sand can be reused the mold material can be reused making the another but shape can be shape cannot be retained shape has to be breaked after casting but the material can be reused in the and to prepare the another mold so very simple to complex structure can be possible and in this cases the ferrous and the non ferrous both metals can be handled using the green sand molding operation similarly cold box mold in this case we use the various organic and inorganic binders here is the difference organic and inorganic binders are blended uh, into the sand that act as a binding agent and in that cases the bonding can be better strength can be more improved in this case we can expect the greater strength as compared to the green sand molding in case of the cold box mold so at the same time the dimensional accuracy for this uh, for this mold is better than in case uh, as compared to the green sand mold but of course we use the organic and inorganic binders so that is sometimes it becomes expensive as compared to the green sand molding process but since the strength can be more it can bring more smoothness and the over the surface and the in case of the cold box mold so therefore it is actually ideal for the uh, more complex structure as compared to the green sand mold and of course uh, the high production runs that means for high production runs we can you we can follow the cold box molding operation third one is the no bake mold in this case no bake mold we use the synthetic liquid resin which is mixed with the sand synthetic liquid resin mixed with the sand and the mixture is hardened at the room temperature basically we not necessary to heat to hard the in this cases uh, for no bake mold process and it is called the cold setting process because when you use the liquid resin so liquid resin can setting take the shape becomes harder at 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 the usually room temperature so that's why it is called the uh, the no bake mold and bond, bonding of the mold takes place without application of the any kind of the heat so it is called the the no bake mold good strength dimensional accuracy and basically ease of molding is more easier to take the particular shape very complex shape can be possible but it is mainly for the very large casting and for prototype and or short run we can utilize this kind of the no bake uh, mold process now we are talking about the pattern also pattern is basically is the create the mold cavity just to equivalent to the shape of the component so therefore in this case the pattern can be made of the wood plastic wax plaster the different different application it can be made of foam also or it can be made of metal also so there are so many different type of the material which is used for the making of the pattern now selection of the pattern is basically depend on the size and the shape of the casting so pattern material so what are the shape and the size of the casting based on that we can decide the the pattern material and of course not only the shape and size of course you have to look into the dimensional accuracy and quantity of the casting whether it is the large quantity or whether only few quantities best required based on that we can select the the pattern material but pattern can be designed with a variety of the features and specific application and economic requirement we can see that depending upon the say we can use the very complex uh, pattern can be uh, designed okay or it may be something like that we can make some small small uh, component of pattern and we can assemble together in the during this uh, process pattern making process so here you see there are different types of the pattern one is the one piece pattern so one piece pattern take the complete shape of the component so that is called the one piece pattern it's a solid pattern you can see this is the one piece pattern 
So, it is also called the loose or the solid pattern and generally use the very simple structure, simple shape and the low quantity production we need it and simple shape in that cases we use the one piece pattern. They are generally made of wood and usually inexpensive. We can make the shape in the form of a wood to create the mold cavity. So, that is called the solid pattern. Now, pattern can be the split pattern also we can we can we can make it the if you see the the two different component with the split into two different half depending upon the ease of the making the mold. So, split pattern you can see are the two pieces pattern are joined together to form the complete pattern. So, this split pattern uh, is basically with respect to one plane we can make the two, uh, two pieces and in this cases we make the two pieces uh, because just to facilitate the ease of the removal from the making the uh, mold from the mold. So, that is why we use the uh, split pattern. So, definitely if there is a complex shapes say we want to create very intricate details of the uh, component in that cases or maybe uh, medium to the high volume products and high volume production we can use the split pattern uh, in, in this case. Similarly, we can use the match plate pattern also pattern can be mounted the opposite sides of the plate the that is called the match that two plates can be matched together. So, it includes the getting and the riser system also you see we have already discussed that in any cast and casting process we have the getting system and riser system. So, we can use the match plate pattern that to match with the, the getting and the riser system and in, in that case you see the this the match plate with respect to that the top part and bottom part we can with respect to one match plate we can we can we can use it this top and bottom part. So, ideal for very high volume production and automatic molding lines also. So, we can use the cope and drag pattern also we can use the in the cope pattern and drag pattern individually we can make it but when a, in a in a flux so in the sand mold we can use the cope and drag part but if you see one part is the cope pattern there is a riser is design part of the cope and getting is uh, a certain getting system is a part of the drag pattern. So, this way separately we can we can make it the pattern and we can merge it along the parting line we can merge it cope and drag together and then we can get the one complete shape of the component this kind of the pattern. So, there are different ways to make the pattern de it depending upon the design of the system what way we can how is we can remove the pattern from the mold based on that we can use the different types of the pattern. Now, the course already discuss the course is the creating is the creating the internal component of the sand casting process. So, here you see that uh, this in this this is the parting line with the central line we can use the top and bottom and we can merge together, but if you see this is the core core is put inside this thing just to hold it. So, some kind of the holding of the core is there and here you can see the the chaplets we can utilize. So, chaplets integrate to adjustment just to holding the core in more precisely inside the mold cavity. So, for that purpose we can utilize the uh, chaplet. So, here you see the this course we see this is the hollow component will be there, but we see there is a riser this is the riser, this is the runner we can pour the molten metal from here down sprue, down sprue here molten metal comes through here the through the uh, through the riser uh, runner it passes it, the riser and from here we enter the mold cavity just to fill this the mold cavity by the liquid metal. So, here you can see that after solidification you can see this is the uh, final part will be uh, utilizing uh, the, this is the output from this thing we just remove the riser and the uh, uh, runner part that part and from the uh, actual component then we get the uh, compo uh, thing which is having the hollow part if you see this is the hole is there inside. So, this is the hole and this created because of the presence of the core. Now, this is the chaplet just to hold the core, but the core, core should have some kind of the strength also. So, such that cores must be some kind of the possess some kind of the strength some permeability and collapsibility also there because after finishing we need to collapse the core uh, able to collapse the core also and the ability to withstand the heat also all kind of the properties might be having should have in the uh, core material also. So, uh, accordingly we can choose the material for the core. So, sand core is the most common type of the uh, core material. So, we use the similar sand and the some binding agent element to make the core ok and you see the chaplet just to hold the the proper position uh, of the core inside the mold cavity. Now, you can see the 
casting send casting the operation sequence is something like that uh, this is the uh, send, uh, complete operating system we see the first we start with the mechanical drawing we look into the steps mechanical drawing of the part then we look into the uh, core pattern we according as per the drawing we can use the pattern core pattern plate we can utilize this thing and third step is the the drag pattern that means scope and drag pattern we can use in the, these two cases the scope part and drag in design the pattern then who is the core boxes through which we can hold it and then uh, core halves paste together we can see that core these two core halves we can paste together and then cope ready for the sand we can use the step 6 the cope ready in this for the same we see the sprue and riser runner everything together we can make it and then after on this thing as assembly this thing uh, in, in this case we can use the cope the all the all the materials the cast component that basic cast the shape of the uh, cast component along with the course uh, along with the runner riser all this together we can uh, is ready sprue everything is ready here. Uh, that is the cope ready for the for the sand that means uh, we put all these components over the cope then we'll next step we'll try to fill that uh, uh, with the sand so cope seven step seven cope after ramming with the sand and removing of the pattern sprue and risers so all this we say we then make the replica for the pattern riser and this thing beforehand and and the step six we put it together over the cope uh, over the, uh, uh, this thing the um, in this cases that the once we fill the fill with the sand here then after filling up the sand we try to remove the uh, other component the solid component such that it will create the cavity here now once we ready the cope then we did we did the similar exercise for the drag so drag part drag ready and for the sand we put it and of course step 9 the drag after removing the pattern after removing the pattern has to be removed then because then it will create the cavity so after removing the pattern it will create the cavity in the from the drag part so once we drag part and cope are ready together then we merge together drag and cope set one particular place and the other step ten. so drag and cope as the set then completely then the is ready for the casting operation so then cope and drag assembles and ready for the pouring uh, on this this cases so it will create the complete cast volume along with the riser uh, sprue gate all are uh, there uh, associated with this thing so once it is done then we put the the cast material into the uh, pouring basin comes through there once it is done then solidification occurs then casting as the remove from the mold heated uh, mold so casting as removed from the mold so cast component is removed from the mold once it is done then we perform the heat treatment and once it is heat treatment after that we, do, we even after that we can follow casting ready for the sea pen means before that we need to follow some kind of the finishing the phase to bring the dimensional uh, tolerance associated with the cast component so these are the steps associated with the the sand casting operation and from there we can understand the complete system of the uh, sand casting operations now in the set can sand casting there is a one casting process that is called the lost foam process so lost foam process is nothing but the in the in this cases we use the polystyrene pattern we can use polystyrene patterns which is basically allowed to some point of the time we allow to evaporate when it is contact with the uh, with the metal molten metal it just evaporate and create the cavity and that cavity will fill by the uh, molten material casting so therefore polystyrene pattern is basically typical characteristics of the lost foam process so it is also called the evaporative pattern casting process or full mold casting process because this pattern metal is directly evaporated with the when some way we apply the heat uh, to the to this pattern or it is called the full mold casting process so it is actually most important casting process for ferrous and non ferrous metals and mostly this process is usually followed in case of the automobile industry so automotive industry we usually follow this lost foam casting process in this case polystyrene beads basically we use the polystyrene beads which is having containing 5 to 8 percent of the pentane they are placed in in a in a preheated die so basically that is 
placed in a preheated die. First, we make the die over the die we can preheated we can make the we put the polystyrene bed. So, then with the preheated die it is the polystyrene try to expand and take the shape of the die cavity. So, based on the die cavity it takes this particular shape. Now, additional heat is supplied to fuse and the bond of the bead together. So, once we create the particular shape, but we put the additional heat such that it can bond together take the exact shape of the uh, of the die cavity. Once it is done then we gradually we cool the die the die is gradually cooled and then after that it is open. So, when the die is open so we can we can get the pattern made of the polystyrene. So, polystyrene pattern is uh, removed from the die and now it is ready for the utilization for the creation of the, the casting operation. But once is the polystyrene pattern is removed from the die then this pattern is basically coated. It is coated with the some kind of refractory material and such that some ceramic cell will be uh, coating over the shape of the over the shape of the pattern. Now, this because this coating actually helps to create some kind of the smooth surface finish and of course, to prevent the sand erosion during the metal pouring and that is why we create the very the, the, the coating is basically helps in this particular process. Now, here you can see that how it works. So, we create the polystyrene pattern first this is, is a coated pattern which is placed this polystyrene pattern which is coated with the some wall the coat, coating is there outside and then which is put in the mold uh, there is the of the box mold box placed in the flax. Uh, flax is the this is the flax we place it this is the pattern then we filled with the supporting sand here. The sand is now compacted sand, one full the sand, sand is compacted around the uh, this this pattern polystyrene pattern. So, once it is done then we put the molten metal here. So, when it is contact with the molten metal it is a start evaporating this this pattern. So, once you start evaporating the polystyrene burns and that is the, with this particular temperature and this gas actually escape through this way this part. So, the when gas is escaped we will get the this is the particular once it is done. So, um, complete fill with the molten metal and we follow the solidification of the molten metal then we will get the uh, finally the uh, cast component. So, here actually this since this polystyrene burns and escapes that is why it is called the vaporizes and create the mold cavity that is why it is called the lost form uh, mold this particular process. So, lost form process we can see that is the advantage there are so many advantages of this associated with the lost form process one is the one main is the it, this process is actually see the process is actually very simple whatever effort is put easily to make the, the mold basically uh, the to make the pattern. So, therefore, in this case we do no need to use any kind of the parting line any kind of the corners or riser system, but at the same time it helps to facilitate the to create any any kind of the uh, uh, very complex structure can be possible without using any kind of uh, this kind of the riser system uh, parting line core system is it is possible. At the same time the flux are used for this process inexpensive flux basically we use the allow to sand to fill the remaining part at the same time or uh, it used the already mentioned that it is very intricate details part for a complex structure is possible through the making of the this pattern in this particular case. So, here it, it produce very almost good surface finish because we use some kind of the coating it is basically just to hold the sand in the better way and uh, to avoid the erosion of the sand. So, therefore, the surface finish is very good or near net safe uh, component can be produced using this lost from casting process we do not need any kind of the this thing finishing is good the extra machining operation will not be required in this particular process. So, dimensional ac accuracy is also very good um, and because it is basically uh, exactly replicate the size of the lost um, pattern, but it can this process can be applicable for wide range of the material for aluminum cast iron even for the steel also applicable for the lost form casting process. You see the one example also engine block and the cylinder head. So, how it looks like the very complex structure so many intricate details are there associated with this thing, but in this case the using the lost form casted part with the uh, with pattern we can use uh, this particular uh, this engine component can be produced using the uh, lost form uh, process uh, uh, following this particular process.
So, how we see that example that a very complex structure can be produced in the loss prone process. Now, we can analyze one case study also associated with the loss prone casting process of the engine block. We had see one of the most important components of the internal combustion engine is the this thing the engine block we see this is the engine block we see this is the one of the most complicated shape we have associated in a, in a combustion engine. Now, suppose in this case the industry is very, very focused for the high quality lightweight design and the low cost usually focused on these things, but because of but in this case also the cost should be low at the same time it will be able to produce the very complex uh, shape casting component. So, that is why here in this case we try to reach the economic benefits through casting of the more complex geometrics and of course, at the same time multiple components can be incorporated into the one parts. So, this thing is also associated with the uh, engine block if you see the figure of the engine block the, the previous slide. So, here you can see that it is a very complicated and uh, it seems that lots of components are uh, together multiple components uh, the cast together using the this particular process. So, also at the same time evaporative pattern casting can satisfy all this requirement. So, this these are the requirement looking for complex structure not much in inexpensive the same process can be very simple. So, all this can be achieved if you follow the basic principle of the evaporative uh, pattern is associated if you can possible to associate with the evaporative pattern we can take this particular shape uh, or that can fulfill all the requirements uh, to uh, this uh, requirements of this. So, therefore, in this sense the lost form casting line is basically reduced to produce the aluminum engine block and the cylinder head. So, using this lost form and that you know this uh, it is uh, aluminum alloy we can use that. So, in that case we use the example for this thing. So, 45 kilowatt 3 cylinder engine block can be produced through the lost form casting process used for the marine application. So, this particular use e engine is used for the marine application which so, is the 45 kilo which is a very high power engine basically 3 cylinder engine uh, one of the most economic way the lost form casting is basically utilized here. So, we can compare also we can use that uh, previously used the manufacturing such as the 8 separate die casting the block was converted to a single 10 kg casting with a weight and cost saving. So, it is used to be manufactured as the aid uh, earlier before if you do not use the lost form casting process in that cases use the separate die casting if you use this then you need to go for the in this particular process we use the uh, 8 separate die casting has to be performed and in this case. Uh, um, to get this this out this 45 kilowatt marine engine. So, therefore, but if you follow the lost form casting process we can see the is a converted to the single casting process single the weight of the 10 kg because if you know the 8 separate die casting process each and every die casting process we need to some kind of the loss of the metal is also associated and each and every die casting is the counting the, to, the total loss will be much more. But if you follow the lost form uh, casting process it is possible the same thing can be produced on a single casting operation, but total weight can be 10 kg. So, therefore, cost saving is also there at the same time the weight saving is also there associated with this or material saving is also associated with the lost form casting process. Here finally, you can say the lost form casting also allowed the consolidation of the engine cylinder head and the exhaust and the cooling system into the block. So, all can be components in the in the single casting operation. So, also it can suppress the associated meshing operations also it can suppress the fasteners requiring the sand cast or the die casting operation. So, it means that even if you follow the die casting operation also you need to perform some kind of the machining operation. Even if you follow the sand casting operation definitely you have to remove the runner riser all these things and you have to follow you have to perform some kind of the machining operation to get the desired finish or to remove the uh, unwanted which is not part of the component and after that we need to go for the assembly of the all the components to get the same single component. But all these tasks can be performed using the single casting operation lost form casting operation of the engine block. So, that is why to produce the engine block we this is the lost form casting process is the most suitable uh, casting operation 
to produce the engine block uh, associated in the in the main application and here this is an example just to make you understand then what is the importance and how the lost form casting is the different from the uh, other con conventional sand casting or the die casting operation process. So, that is all uh, thank you very much and this is the completion of the, of the first part of this module and the next part we will discuss in detail the other casting operations in the next part. So, thank you very much for your kind attention.